Welcome back to Baruto Anime Review, episode number 85. This is where I'm viewing the 86th episode of the series, Karasuchi's Will. Yeah, this episode, mostly put, is a flashback episode. I mean, yeah. well, it's a flashback episode due to the fact that Okadai actually explains the reasoning of why he's doing what he does. He thinks he's fulfilling his grandson's will by doing all this stuff. And he reveals this while taking Baruto to this place where his grandson died. Of course, they show the grandson the flashback where he has aspirations to become Ka 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 uh, Tazakaki. And they specifically don't relate, they don't give the relation of how he's related to Karasuchi because she's, she's, she's his granddaughter. So either these two are siblings or cousins they don't explain that here at all which is kind of dumb of course there is a scene of when ku takes over the village yeah pretty easily he does it what seems like in just a few minutes mm -hmm. yep that's what it seems like to me yeah he takes it over in just a few minutes and yeah he just takes it over takes five random shinobi saying leaf shinobi to be taken, get the hearts removed. Yep. And of course, the four and, and they reveal what these artificial humans are called in this in this particular arc. The ones in stone made are called fabrications. Means they're not real at all. They explain how crew was created and how the other people were created as well. I'm hoping that the Air Four actually survive. I don't really care about Ku at all because the Air Four actually are quite interesting characters. Ku is not that interesting of a character, and it's also revealed the person who helped Oak and I uh, help this plan to get get this thing off the ground, get the way it is. It was that crazy scientist guy who appeared just a couple episodes back. Apparently, he was the one behind us. Oh yeah, and how in the world he was able to create these fabrications through a very particular device that bar to account very recently. What was it? A white Zetsu. Yes, I'm not kidding about this. A white Zetsu. I'm like, seriously? A white Zetsu? This is the first time I've heard it actually brought up in a good while. I haven't seen heard this brought up since that two part of the aired prior to the tuning exam arc. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's see what else. Yeah, in the case of the backstory itself, they show how they were able to get that that lab. Also, for some reason, Mitsuke is absent in this episode. Yeah, there's no explain explanation for that. They reference him in the episode, but he's nowhere to be seen. Of course, Shigadai is running around the village. Karasuchi herself is only seeing the flashback. She doesn't show up in present that she's still in that cage. And as for what her and Shigadai's plan is, who knows? We'll probably want to find out until probably like either next week's episode or two weeks from now. Who the heck knows? Because the anime stretched this arc out for really no reason at all. And this arc has been going on now for quite a while. Yeah, since episode like 70. Yeah, so this arc has officially been going as of this episode for, I'd say at least... 16 episodes, which makes it as long as the last arc for the series that just aired. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Chuni exam arc, which I don't... It seems like that in the case of this episode, this episode felt like we actually got progression in this arc. After having like two episodes in this arc of virtually nothing. At least last week's episode was interesting. This week's episode was just... Much better than it's been lately. Like, it's probably one of the more better written episodes of the entire season. Mm -hmm. Maybe they hurt. Maybe the writers of the series hurt everybody's complaints about this particular arc. And it does seem like that the arc is going to wrap up pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the episode ends with one of the art one of the artificial humans, Katu. They reveal his name. He shows up. <coughs> of course, he's sent to find Okanai by Ku, him and the blonde hair girl 
don't know this woman's name. Yeah, that's something weird, though, about these artificial humans. We don't know their names, with the exception of Ku. So, Kairu is the one with the red hair with the sitting on top. As for the other three, I don't know who these characters are. They have not revealed their names yet at all. I mean, why in the world would you take, like, 60 episodes to reveal one of the characters' names? It honestly makes no damn sense at all. Yeah, they're very secretive about this for, like, no reason at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, Barto, because of the way Okanai explained it and some of the stuff he says about Will and stuff like that, he does not agree with Okanai's plan. He does not want to see his plan get permission. So he decides not to cooperate with it. But Okanai said he's not asking for his cooperation anyway. He's not asking for it at all. Just don't get in our way. And Barto's like, yeah, I'm going to get in your way because your plan sounds completely ridiculous. Well, he doesn't necessarily say that. He just, just goes against it. And that's when Curtis shows up. Yeah. Oh, in case you're wondering, what, where is the rest of the cast who's supposed to be part of this arc? Yeah, they're not seen again for the second episode in a row. Though they are going to show up in next week's episode. Yes, that's what it looks like. It looks like that Team 10 and Sadara, well, mainly Enogen, Chocho, and Sadara, along with the kitty version of the Akanu actually show up in next week's episode. Mm -hmm. Yep. This overall is a really good episode. Much improvement over, over the past few episodes. And like I said, it does feel like with this episode that this arc is progressing forward finally. Mm -hmm. So that's it for this particular review. I may or may not have time to do a review of Black Butler. It just depends exactly what time I finish up re re watching the first season of the anime. Okay? But until I see you in the next review, bye.